locked on. Firing catapult. Enemy missiles incoming, Captain. Hi, Captain. Firing on enemy missiles. Good night. Scratch one dreadnought. So this is Dreadnought, a game where you fly massive spaceships around planets and in space and engage in huge capital ship fleet battles. It's pretty darn cool. A huge shout out to Greybox for sponsoring this video. I'm really glad that I checked this game out because it's honestly the exact kind of game I would be playing. I love free to play tactical shooters. Dreadnought is free to play. It's available on the PC and the PlayStation 4. And it's very easy to get into and it doesn't feel like it's got any sort of major pay to win mechanics, which is awesome. Some of these games can feel very unfriendly to novice players, but that definitely was not the case here with Dreadnought. Getting into it was very easy. The tutorial system caught me up to speed, and I immediately found some ships that I really gravitated towards. There's a whole different class system in Dreadnought. It's, it's heavily focused on team-based shooter mechanics. There's healing ships. There's sort of specialty ships that have... Uh, interesting unique abilities. There's Dreadnoughts, of course, which are the biggest ships that kind of absorb the most damage and can potentially deal the most damage if they're in the right situation. Then you have Artillery Cruisers, which I spent the most time playing and ranking up. They're basically the sniper ships of the fleet, and uh, I just found myself doing exceptionally well with those. Of course, I'd like to play the other classes a bit more, but when you find a class that you start to dominate with, uh, you end up playing it a bit more at the start just to get a feeling for it. And artillery cruisers have a counter. They're called corvettes, and they're these fast little ships that sneak in behind you, deal massive damage, and then get away. And artillery cruisers are basically the glass cannons of the fleet. So they got to stick around the other fleet. They got to stay near healing ships and dreadnoughts that can help them defend against missiles and stuff. Uh, but if those corvettes get in behind, it is bad news. Now, I gotta say, I was honestly expecting a game that was gonna be far more difficult to learn, but it's one of those games that's easy to learn, but feels hard to master. The, the power management system, which is probably the most important part of the game, is relatively straightforward, but it is one of those things that takes a while to practice with when you, you just gotta instinctively switch over to shields or engines. So basically, you have your big power bar on the right, which is that blue power bar, and you can use that to switch over to extra engine power. You can switch over to do more damage with your weapons, or you can switch over to have extra shields if you really need to absorb a lot of fire. And so when you activate one of those abilities, it drains that power bar and you can deactivate it whenever and then it will slowly charge back up. But this allows you to perform one of those feats for a short period of time. And this really allows you to sort of get the advantage on your opponents. And if you have good power management skills, that will be the difference as to whether or not you're going to win a game or win a 1v1 battle. Usually there aren't a lot of 1v1 battles in this, but if you sneak up behind another cruiser, as I'm doing right now, you can switch your power to your weapons and do extra damage before they realize what's happening. And I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to activate my weapons, get a really high damaging critical shot on him, get another shot, which is mostly deflected, but he's hurt too much. And then I take him out with the third shot there. So before he even realized what was going on, he barely had any time to make any sort of maneuvers and get out of there. And then it was too late. This was definitely one of my better games. I just had some epic flanks here where we just decimated the enemy and it felt cool. And the graphics are awesome. When ships explode in this and you just see all the debris uh, careening down towards the planet, it's really cool. Um, the scale of this game is kind of neat. Obviously, you know, it's a it's a video game, so we're, we could be small spaceships, but the artwork is designed to make it look like we're these huge behemoths of these cruisers and dreadnoughts flying around and just massive weapons and countermeasures going off and fighting each other. I love the art style. The ships look really cool, in my opinion, and there's different manufacturers of the ships as well. So, like, when you're outfitting your ship or looking at what sort of progression line you want to go down, the different manufacturers have have different visual styles to them and of course different combat styles as well. Then as you start to rank up your higher tier ships you get a lot of different module options. The module options increase the higher tier you play at so uh, tier 2 will give you a few module options, tier 3 will give you a lot more module options. You see the
the modules at the top of the screen there. And this destroyer is rushing us here, so I launched my flechette missiles on him, and you'll see those flying out here. Normally this destroyer could take me out here, but I have some good backup, and uh, I kind of gave him everything I had as he was charging us there, and I managed to barely squeak by, although I think another ship does eventually take me out here, but uh, not before I deal some pretty significant damage to the other ships around me. I managed to take out this artillery cruiser here, and then finally one guy in the distance gets a good snipe on me, and that's it. I'm, I'm finally out on that flank there, but it was a hell of a flank. We took out many ships and really turned the tide of this battle in a major way. And so there's really cool moments in Dreadnought where you can do that. And at first I thought this game was extremely slow paced, but you can actually divert all your power to your engines and your maneuvering thrusters and speed around the map and get into good locations, uh, which is a cool way to kind of speed up the flow of the game a lot. And you can get some really fast paced flanking maneuvers, especially the Corvettes. Um, almost play out a bit more like fighters at times. So they can zip in, do some serious damage, and then zip out. And you really got to watch out for them. I was definitely raging on some maps when uh, good Corvette pilots were around and just sneaking up behind me all the time and uh, taking me out. I'm pretty terrible as a Corvette captain. The game doesn't really give them to you right away. It kind of encourages you to try some of the more basic ships, you know, the, the simple fleet ships where the Corvettes uh, really do require a higher degree of understanding and skill to be effective with, but they look cool and uh, I want to get good with them someday. There's also healing frigates that play a huge role in keeping your fleets alive. Basically, if a healing frigate can sit behind an asteroid and heal up a dreadnought while the dreadnought returns fire and tanks tons of damage, then they're doing an excellent job at uh, basically just keeping you alive. So if you've played any sort of RPG or game where there's healers and tanks and whatnot, a lot of those mechanics do carry over but um, it involves like sort of bigger fleet positional strategy and stuff. And so it's pretty cool. I got to say they've done a great job at creating a very interesting space strategy game that's equal parts skill as it is strategy. And some of the healer ships don't require quite as much skill, but a lot more strategy to be good with. So they're ships that appeal to all different kinds of players, depending on where your personal strengths or weaknesses lie. There's probably a good ship for you out there. And I really like that that's well factored into this game. Like, I like shooting a lot, and so uh, the artillery cruisers really appealed to me because if you can lead your target properly at range, then you're going to do well with them. If you suck at leading targets, then you're not going to do much in an artillery cruiser. If you've got a good mind for power management and module timing and stuff like that, you know, a dreadnought might be really good for you because a lot of their strength is factored into how well you can manage your power and when to use the right modules at the right time. A huge part of those ships is just absorbing damage and knowing how to do that and putting out enough damage to at least keep your enemies at bay or maybe even sort of aggro your enemies to get them to shoot at you instead of your damage dealing ships. And so they're pretty darn cool. I like the Dreadnoughts. They're fun to play. I'd like to try them out a bit more. Now, if you're super aware of fleet positioning and what the rest of your team is doing, then a tactical cruiser might be more your speed because they heal up other ships and they give buffs and stuff like that and so if you position yourself next to some of your better players or a group of players you can really increase their performance and so that kind of ship might be more your speed regardless of what kind of shooter player you are there probably is a ship here that fits your play style a bit and i'm kind of excited to learn more about all the different play styles because the more you know about each ship in each class the better you understand their weaknesses when you fight against them so I'm excited to play this game more, figure out the ships a bit more, and go down those progression trees and fight at some of the higher tiers. I hope you guys enjoyed this Dreadnought overview video. I am by no means an authority on Dreadnought skill or tactics by any means, uh, but I do look forward to playing it more and learning more about the game. Let me know what you guys think. I'll put links to the game in the video description. Again, it is free, available on PC and PlayStation 4. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.